Okay, so your patient has just been intubated and now we're taking a time out. I'm going to show you a little bit, a couple things, okay? So this is an ET tube trach holder, an ET tube holder. It's very similar to a trach holder. Um, what's nice about this is that um, it has a bite block. So the patient is not going to be able to chew this. A long time ago, if a patient had their own teeth and they had an endotracheal tube, they could actually chew through part of that. So this bite block is going to help prevent that from happening. Um, and it makes it easier to perform oral care. Um, this is nice and cushioned on the back here. And um, you're going to make sure that you know where this is. So I'm going to just place this here with the bite block in between their teeth. See that? I'm going to make sure that this balloon is a little bit taut, but not too taut. And I'm going to make see there's numbers on here. And this is at 20.5 at the lip line. Okay? That's going to be important for me to know. Then I'm going to tighten this so that the ET tube stays in place. I'm not going to occlude it. I'm just going to tighten it till it stays in place. All right. Then I'm going to feed this back through the patient's neck. Down through the hair. And that is very secure. This goes in the garbage. Okay, so now the patient is ready to be set up for ventilator care. Um, and how I do that is I can then place the patient on the ventilator. But before I do that, I'm going to put the closed system suctioning on here. Okay, so now I can do a closed system suction. Do you see how much longer this is than the trach? Because it has the whole oral pharyngeal airway to go down before it can get down to where it needs to be. Okay, and there's actually writing on the side of here so you know how far down you're going. So when you want to suction, you feed this down, the patient begins to cough, you press on the suction button and you just pull this back. Now, do you see this black line right here? This tells you that the suction cath is back in its housing. It needs to be all the way up here. If you leave this like here, can you see that black, black line right there? This suction is occluding most of this endotracheal tube. So you are causing hypoxia to this patient. That's why it's very important that it's all the way out, that you can see this black line. When you're done suctioning, you lock it back up, listen to the patient's lung sounds. You're gonna note the type, the amount, the color, um, the consistency of the mucus, how the patient tolerated it, and you're also going to perform oral care after um, you suction a patient because a huge study went out and they found that patients um, were not getting oral care after they were placed on the ventilator and it actually caused um, an overgrowth of bacteria within their mouth and oral pharynx and that in turn caused ventilator assisted pneumonia. So patients who are on the ventilator should be receiving um, oral care every time they are suctioned or every four hours. Okay. So let's do open suction because that's so much fun right? So let's take this off. And when I do open suction this time, we're going to use a sputum trap. And what a trap does is it catches any of the mucus that the patient has. And you're going to want to do this before 
the patient receives their first dose of antibiotic. Okay, so the suction is on there. And do you see how this is? This is just like a trap in the sink. Okay. So I'm going to just get this a little bit wet with my sterile saline, place it down, and I'm going much further again because I have to go past that oral pharynx. Once the patient begins to cough, any secretions that I get are going to go right into that trap. But Mrs. Shepherd, what if all the mucus that I get stays in the tubing and doesn't go in the trap. Simple solution, my friend. Give it a little sterile saline, it'll flush it right in there, okay? You want as much as you can get. Now, if you get 20 milliliters, that's going to be plenty. But if you only get, hmm, maybe five, five will be good, okay? Now, again, you're going to get rid of your catheter. Then you are going to take this. You're going to date, time, and initial it. Who the patient is, medical record num number, and their date of birth. That's it.